So one day I was stuck in remote Western Australia and Bowie said to me, dad, I want to go to my own appointments. That little thing of, I want to do this. It was actually to a surgeon for a pre-op appointment. And I, and I thought that's an interesting problem to solve. And so I walked it back through, well, what needs to happen in an appointment? Hello and welcome to The Connection, where RL Datix's Chief Customer Officer Liz Jones and Medical Director Darren Kilroy are joined by leaders and colleagues from within the healthcare industry. In The Connection, we explore how people and technology in healthcare can come together to create great experiences and support patient safety. We hope you enjoy listening. Welcome to The Connection Podcast. My name is Liz Jones. My name is Darren Kilroy. And we are here at the NHS Confederation. Day two. Uh, day two. And um, I'm really thrilled, actually, because we're being joined by Steve Lewis, who um, we met for the very first time yesterday. We did. Um, and, and, and I think that's exactly what these events are about, right? You make connections, you meet people, they, um, they are interesting, and you think this there's a story that others need to hear. So, um, so Steve, m maybe I, I'm not going to do justice to explain what your story is, but if you could start by telling us a little bit about uh, NABU, which is your company, and um, and the work that you're currently doing, and then and then between us, we'll um, we'll, we'll kind of uh, probably have a lot of questions to ask you. Uh, pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. I think um, likewise, when you show up somewhere where you're not necessarily meant to be. Uh, some pretty awesome things happen, and and that's that's the origin of my story. On um, in the lead up to becoming a dad, uh, like everybody, I had an amazing career, and and I loved what I was doing. I worked in music, and I had been had the great pleasure of working with some amazing uh, musicians, from Aerosmith um, to Lenny Kravitz, uh, a group called Rockapella, and the list goes on and on. And I loved my career. And then I got my life somewhat re-railed. Um, I'm not going to say derailed. Um, re-railed by having a daughter who was born with, uh, with some significant challenges. And so I went from one day working with rock stars designing clothes in a campaign to the next day standing in front of a wall of machines that I didn't understand that were responsible for this life. That's the most important thing. And as... As a, a, as you know, arguably successful, well educated person, I felt completely lost, mm -hmm. and Bowie's mum felt lost, and our whole family was somewhat. Bowie's your fractured. daughter. Bowie's my daughter. Yeah, um, she was born uh, two thousand seven, April third, and um, and is now eighteen. And so, as we've gone about this life, and and you know, you sort of go down the path of becoming a primary carer to somebody with a disability or a chronic illness, and you realize how isolating that can be. You know, when people ask you how you doing, right? The most common common question. I love England because you have to do it three times here, right? How you doing? You're all right. You're all right. And if you say no, you know, they're not they're not there We're not to prepped answer. For that. Right? That's, no, that's not right. like, that wasn't pub. Right? And if you do that in a <laughs> in a pub on a Sunday, people say, oh, you know, you're looking a little tired. You're all right. And and you go down that rabbit hole, you quickly find yourself alone at the bar. And it's not a popular thing to say or point out how isolating that can be, but it's extremely isolating. And and it's hard to reconnect. It's hard to get your head back into working. It's hard to connect with your partner. You know, my my daughter's mom, we've got two two girls together and we've got a very supportive relationship, but we were fractured because that was the entirety of our lives. And and you you stop having the ability to support somebody because you just have so much weight and, and you're I, cracked. Exactly. And I think um and so we you know, here we will hear a lot of people talk about how important it is to have families, uh, service users, patients yeah. input to the solutions that are going to make health and care better. And uh, and and what you're going to explain to us now is a living example of how that 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 incredible experience has turned into something that you're doing to ensure that other people don't have to go through what you did in the same way. Absolutely. And and it takes that lived experience. And and there's a lot of these stories around Confed. So one day I was stuck in remote Western Australia um, and Bowie said to me, Dad, I want to go to my own appointments. 
that little thing of I want to, to do to, this. To primary care appointment for, or was to, it to... It was actually to a surgeon for oh. a pre-op appointment. Wow. Uh, yeah. And and I, and I thought that's that's an interesting problem to solve. And so I walked it back through, well, what needs to happen in an appointment? She's going to check in. There's going to be an exchange of the IDs and, and the standard admin things. Then there's going to be uh, that initial, let's gather some information, height, weight changes, um, who's going to ask that? So her mom and I would always exchange that information on a text message. Okay, so height, weight, the percentage change, and how are we doing? Because that's a big struggle for us. Then, um, then she's going to go, and he's going to say we're either go for surgery or we need to wait and we need to figure something out. So I gave her the if he says go, answer these questions and make sure he looks at these documents. And then there was a note taker in the background. So. This occurs and bing. And you mean you by note taker, because I think not everyone listening will necessarily yeah, know what yeah. that is. That's yeah. So in, in business, you know, we've optimized the corporate life for the board and the shareholders to have a better experience. And that's really just uh, it, the one that I used for that was called Fireflies. And something it, listening. You know, Fireflies basically was gonna, listening, yeah. taking notes, giving me yeah. action items, giving me a positive negative score. Who spoke too much? Who spoke enough? Right now I'm speaking too much. Um, and and so to apply that into her world, but to her, it's far more important, right? Because I get the notes, her mom gets the notes, we get the same notes. So one person doesn't have to have the same conversation 12 times at hospital, go home and have the same conversation with me where I might say, well, did you ask this? And, you know, maybe next time you should ask it like this. And then the conversation with the other partner is, well, why didn't you do this? And did you show them that? It's too much. And this is where people get um, severely isolated. And then there's the pressure. Now, we are emotionally intelligent as a family. And, and part of this is teaching people to have that same approach to their healthcare because unfortunately, communication gets lost. Somebody says something the wrong way. The argument's now about that and they don't realize it. And they think it's about, oh, I'm just trying to get the best care. It's like, well, you know, it's like when people say, Oh, you know, excuse me, I'm brutally honest. Yeah. I always say you're more interested in being brutal than you are in being honest. Let's just <laughs> face it, right? So to have that ability to break down um, those barriers so that a family can have a better experience. Um, it was actually from a, a, a children's hospital in Graz, Austria. I know Graz is in the news right now for horrible reasons, but they had a rule. We went there for a, a feeding clinic called No Tube, and um, they had a rule that there was no medical talk around the child. For the first few days, our prescription was to walk two hours through the woods to a church that had a beer garden, have two beers and walk home with no medical talk. And I wanted to strangle this guy. Like here I've come halfway around the world from Los Angeles to Austria to have this great solution. And he tells me to go for a walk and have a beer. <laughs> like, I don't know. However, right, amazing advice because when you're hooked up to the machines and you start to break away that chat you see the impact that that chat has on the child the act the sats change right you go from oxygenation in the low 80s severe like this maybe ventilator time to everything's okay because the impact that anxiety has yeah, it's so like a turbocharged social prescribing isn't 100%, it yeah, yeah. yeah and 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 look i'm not here to say i can fix all the problems i'm here to say we need to have a, a better look at at patient behavior when they're not in clinic, right? When the doors are closed, when the lights are out, because for us, it's a 24 seven job. And I know there's a lot of really amazing, passionate people that don't have that same, um, that don't have this, you know, I punched out at five, but you know, they're not there at night, yeah. you know? And so in developing NABU yeah. outside of those real basics, when you look at what we can do with AI tools, I wanted not to have the World Wide Web of everything pumped to me because we have that, right? Everyone's got that. Um, I want to have my doctor, my provider individually being able to continually reinforce to me why I'm doing things, but not in a way that I have to com continually communicate with them. They've given me the information in more ways than one. We've had it as chat. You've given it to me in a document. I've got it in a pamphlet from an advocacy group. But I'm not going to go back and read that pamphlet in the middle of the night or check the notes from the occupational therapist when somebody's having a bit of a meltdown. I want to say, hey, Nabu, what did Dr. Woodhead tell me I need to do today? 
and have that information retold to me in any which way and get conversational with my own information because that is what we really need in him. You know, another letter that says, show up on this date and time. Okay. And this is why a lot of people don't show up. They forget. That's not an important letter, but an important letter is, um, you've just had a knee reconstruction and we need you doing at least 4,000 steps for the next three weeks. Please come back on this date and let's have a chat as to what your next goal is. Now I've got a reason. I've got a why. I'm reconnected yeah. to that mission for because improvement. It's interesting is because we've got such a huge population just in this country, of course, of yeah. you know, elderly, vulnerable people, uh, a lot of whom are socially isolated and lonely, and loneliness itself breeds illness. And it's just that kind of interaction that they're missing, isn't it, in, yeah. in their everyday lives. So you've got an example, obviously, from your example of, of, of early, early childhood and the need for it there. And on the other end of the age spectrum, it's just as important in the elderly population. Absolutely. You know? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, I've got a friend, uh, who, who got the call yesterday. It gives me chills, um, for a heart transplant and she got the call for, uh, you're now on the backup list for a transplant that's happening today. You know, huge, good. Um, she got the call that she's not eligible, but, um, in that moment, I, you know, you think in terms of, okay, so you get that call, you need to communicate with a lot of people. You need to be prepared that's that's a really great use of nabu so that that person can stay in that place and not have to start because as soon as you you know you lay down the train tracks there's a lot of trains coming a lot of, you know what's the next conversation what's the next question i don't have time for this i gotta go but 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 you know i'm just trying to talk to you you know those are those are the more uh extreme cases there's a lot of them like you know i describe it as we live on the left side of the ratio there's a lot of us and we're quiet and we're the side of the ratio that people don't want to be on right um we, we like to think that we're helping and we like to think that everybody's taken care of, but the, the truth is it's really hard. And there's a lot of incredible technology that's promising these outcomes, but none of them are addressing the core, core problem. And that's me. I didn't do what I said I was going to do. I didn't show up when I said I was going to show up. I showed up at an appointment and with all due respect to the note takers, and there's dozens of them, I don't care if my doctor has a more efficient experience. I'm, I'm struggling. I'm hurting. Yeah. Yeah, right? yeah. 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 I didn't take the drugs. I didn't. You yeah. Know, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and I'm stressed. So I need you to answer the question again and again. And I've got amazing <sighs> doctors and they sit and they're so patient. They're so patient. And you just yeah. think, how do you do this? Yeah. But yeah. So with, you're, 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 I, uh, and, and you've just hit on something there that really struck me yesterday, which is your, um, and we talked about it in our session, which is actually the technology now has the ability to make us better patients better carers and better better at being a partner with the clinicians i think yeah. that's the way to phrase it isn't it we, we can be better partners um and that's very different to this kind of scary world where we're just you know we're going to have a lot of feral information and feral people yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and i can I you know it's, it's quite a few years since i graduated med school but i came from a very you know we were all groomed in a very authoritarian education in medical school uh, which is which is a legacy of many centuries of course of the way that which doctors have been trained so it's sort of this democratization now of of how we all approach data and our, our lived experience and how as you say you know there was no notion when i was a younger doctor of the patient experience that wasn't really yeah. a thing. I'm going to tell you what to do. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and I, that will be that. quite clever and, and you're then, not. And here's what you're going to do. It's awful when you look back on it. But at the time, we didn't think about it. When we started this journey, we were told, don't Google. Right. And that's two reasons. One, it's terrifying. And you start seeing. I, I had this moment with Bowie where, um, I, and I never put two and two together. Uh, she has a tracheostomy tube. You don't see many people walking and talking as kids with tracheostomy tubes. All she saw was somebody with a tracheostomy tube who was highly immobile and in a very difficult situation. She thought that she was going down that path. We never addressed that. Like, that's not going to be you. But, you know, and it took a while for her to own up to that's what her fear and anxiety was. And, um, and just that little bit of emotional intelligence. You don't want to go to the internet, but you can't help but go to the internet because that's where the information lies because you're looking for a miracle. So right. now we've got the opportunity to go somewhere else and somewhere better. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so AI refines that information. And we want yeah. to be really clear about we're working with this advocacy group. So we're refining good information so that we're making it more efficient. I can show up and I can have a meaningful appointment with a clinician because I'm prepared with this is who I see. Yeah. This, these are the documents. If you want to look at them or if I'm and traveling. confidence in the data sources. Absolutely. Um, so 
we want to, uh, we're so grateful that you've done this without any preparation, you're sharing. It's, I think it's, um, it's, it's such an important story. Yeah. Um, we want to we want to follow you a little bit Please. now and see how the journey goes. I love before it. we before we leave you, how is Bowie now? Bowie's great. Bowie is uh, a very I've seen a picture. yeah yeah. And yeah, yeah. So t- so t- so yeah. Let, let everybody know sort of so like a, a bit of the story is on the website. Now, obviously, you can't go too you can't go too far down. It's a pretty heavy, heavy, heavy story. But um, but she's a human, right? And so this was also a big part. We we used to put pictures up in the hospital so that we were sort of reminded for everybody, including ourselves, that that this is a human who deserves to be treated like a human, not an experiment. And she's in the ultra rare category. We're an ultra rare family. Um, and um, Bowie, you know, she's ambitious. She's out there, um, you know, unfeathered by re- job rejections. She's just applying, you know, sometimes so she was getting anesthetized, applying for jobs. And the surgeon um, th- I, I said, kiddo, put your phone down, stop watching cartoons. And she said, I'm not watching cartoons. And the doctor said, what are you watching? And she said, I'm applying for jobs. And he said, stop. Can you call my son? Hey, you're applying for jobs whilst getting, and, and, and this is the thing. It's like, here's this little soul who just wants to be out there and treated normally. And, you know, for all of the 2025 wokeism that we have in the world, we still have a huge division that needs to be addressed. And so anything that I can do to make it so that um, her community and and our community gets a better experience by taking away the stress of all of that other stuff, they can walk into a place, instantly transfer the information without a long queue of things or the need for somebody special. Bowie went to public school. And they wouldn't let her outside at recess because there was food being had outside. And somebody said, well, with the trach, there's an aspiration risk and she can't be around food. Said, well, she knows, she knows what she can and can't eat, right? She doesn't have to sit in the library. But to be able to transfer that information instantly with authority that doesn't burden her or me or you know, amazing. And we have to do these things. And so I would love you. To, yeah, I, I've, I, I've done the, the typical founder thing and I've completely derailed the situation to talk more about me, but I would love you to follow along and, and I'll happily share any of those things. And Bowie's, Bowie's doing awesome. Brilliant. Please, Brilliant. And, Brilliant. please. And you guys are based in Australia. And at some point, maybe if we're back down there, we, we can make yeah. it work. Yeah. yeah, we, yeah. We'll meet you all. Right. I'm, yeah. I'm ex- I would, I would love it. And I'd like to bring her. We we're, I'm extremely humbled by the attention from, professionals, people like Peter Steer, uh, who's a neonatologist, who's now an executive. He was here at Red Ormond Street. He's now in Melbourne. He was one of my first supporters. Tim Kelsey, amazing. You know, a very passionate about data sharing. We we're having this this chat last night with Mark Britnell around making sure that innovation supported by the community, supported by the health system, benefits the health system, not just the VCs and the private investors on the business side. Well, of we keep like, saying that everything's all about the why, isn't it? It's, it's all, about, all the about the why. Yeah. Why are we doing you're, anything? Yeah. Your why. And, yeah, yeah. Totally. and keep on. And thank you guys yeah. very much for the work Great that you do. Because you. yeah. you're the ones Great to see you. really making this yeah. possible. Very, very, well, thank you very so, so much. We're going to keep in touch. Yeah. And we're going to wish you a safe journey because you've got to get the train, haven't I've you, I've got to get the train back to yep. Melbourne. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah. Thank you thank so you. much, Steve. Thanks a lot. Thank you for joining us on today's episode of The Connection. We hope this episode has provided you with valuable insights on the role that both technology and people play within the healthcare landscape. For more information and resources, visit rldatix.com. Don't forget to subscribe to The Connection on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any other podcast platform you use. Join us next time as we continue to explore how healthcare is impacted by connecting people and technology. On behalf of the RL Datix team, thanks for listening.